Brian Koberger was allegedly able to stab four Idaho college students to death in just a few minutes, well, it's a big question for the prosecution to explain to the rest of us, specifically the jury, but some insight into his past may give us some clues. Turns out Koberger knew how to use a knife. Brian worked as a fish cutter. He was a fillet man when he was in high school, trained to cut and fillet raw fish. I know how to do it. Means you got to know how to use a knife. We'll see how Cobra it was. Reporter Room with Jessica Della Davies starts now. So today we're going to be discussing the Brian Kohlberger case. We have so much stuff to get into. Do you think there's enough evidence to convict Brian Kohlberger? Today we're going to be talking about the Brian Kohlberger case, the real reason the prosecution has not offered Brian a plea deal, the latest motion filed by the defense team asking for that grand jury indictment to be thrown out, and the most bizarre request in the defense team's latest filings. Also, the state of Idaho has responded to Brian's defense team comments that he has an alibi. We're going to dig into all of this together, so please stay with me until the end of the video so you get all of the important information. Everything I'm sharing with you is my opinion, and opinions are not facts, so please don't send any negativity to anyone. Let's be kind and good to each other. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only, so please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up so I know you are here. Let's start with the defense team's latest motion to dismiss the grand jury indictment and the defense team's alibi on behalf of Brian Kohlberger. So the defense team led by Ann Taylor says that the court should dismiss the grand jury indictment against Brian. Now they're asking the judge to simply put the grand jury verdict aside and say that it is not valid. They're asking the court to throw out 150 years of Idaho law in their new defense team motion. Mm -mm. shady super super shady so they are fighting the state's request to give an alibi but they finally did have to come up with something and it's brian driving around late at night in his car because he has insomnia. Now I'm assuming the defense team is gonna call up one of the neighbors who talked about seeing Brian being tired and didn't seem to be sleeping well after what happened at 1122 King Road on November 13th. And I'm gonna discuss the real reason the prosecution has not offered Brian a plea deal and the most bizarre request in the new defense team filing, and it's a doozy. So please stay with me. So Brian was indicted by the grand jury and the defense team has two things that they want. They either want one grand jury indictment to be thrown out and or two, they want a preliminary hearing. So welcome to the hundreds of new subscribers to Reporter Room. We're so glad that you're here and grateful for you. Let's continue on together, shall we? Let's continue on. Oh, I saw a lot of people on social media commenting that they wondered why the defendant would admit to being in the car driving around on the night of November 13th rather than just staying at home and being asleep. Multiple people on social media felt like the defense team simply saying Brian was at home and asleep would have been a much safer alibi. So here's my theory on this and I'm issuing a speculation trigger warning. If you don't like speculation, you'll want to fast forward over this part. My theory is that the defense team had to admit that Brian was driving around in the car. Remember, the defense has seen the prosecution's evidence. They would have reviewed all of the grand jury transcripts. So that defense team must know that they have to place Brian in the car on the night of November 13th because we've got the phone pinging and we know he was picked up on multiple security cameras on the night of November 13th, going to and leaving from the 1122 King Road house. And we still don't know what his Hyundai Elantra car black box may show. What do you think? 
Do you think there's enough evidence to convict Brian Kohlberger? Every single security camera footage that was available was gone around and picked up by law enforcement. And we've only seen one of those, but we know many more were collected by police and investigators. And I'm going to discuss the real reason the prosecution has not offered Brian a plea deal and the most bizarre request for the new defense team filing in just a moment. So please stay with me. What do you guys think? Let's continue on together, shall we? Let's continue on. So more than likely, law enforcement have the defendant and or something identifying his Hyundai Elantra, such as a license plate or markings on the car on camera footage. So the defense team was forced to concede that Brian was driving around in the car that night. The defense team has to place Brian inside the vehicle to account for the video camera footage and those cell phone pings. And notice they did not say that Brian had an accomplice. Remember those cell phone pings that put Brian at the 1122 King Road around a dozen times leading up to what happened to Ethan, Maddie, Kaylee, and Zanna? Those cell phone pings place him driving to and from the crime scene and they place him at the crime scene again at around 9 a.m the following morning so the defense team has to go with the quote he had insomnia and drives around at night alibi so let's discuss the real reason that the prosecution has not offered brian a plea deal and then we're going to dig into the most bizarre request in the new defense team filing in just a moment so why no plea deal for Brian? This is a capital case and normally we might see some type of plea deal being offered like we did in the Chris Watts deal. So what's going on? Well, I believe that the prosecution must feel like they have a very solid case not to try to reach a plea deal. What do you guys think? Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. So the defense team's alibi states specifically, quote, Mr. Kohlberger has long had a habit of going for drives alone. Often he would go for drives at night. He did so late on November 12th and November 13th, 2022. What was the most bizarre thing about the defense team filing? According to Yahoo News and CNN, the defense team asked in the filing for the court to exempt the defendant, that's Brian, from further inquiry and said he is, quote, prepared to provide further detail in an ex parte hearing with the court. So basically the defense team, it wants, the defense team is asking that the court make a special exemption for Brian, that he be allowed to testify to the judge as to where he was, but without the prosecution hearing it, without the prosecution being present to hear it. So this is essentially asking the court to allow the defendant to testify, but not allow him to be cross-examined. Hmm, what do you guys think about this? Because I think this is really unusual and bizarre. The defense does not want to waive Brian's Fifth Amendment right. They don't want to promise that he'll testify to the same thing at the trial. They just want him to be able to give his alibi to the judge without being cross-examined or questioned by law enforcement. There is a hearing coming up on August 18th at 10.30 a.m. Idaho time. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Let's watch this hearing together.